treat all that is beautiful as seed. This is a Taoist meditation. Treat all that is beautiful as seed. Tao says that whatsoever is indeed beautiful in you, hide it. Never act it out. Whatsoever is truthful in you and valuable, hide it. Because whenever a truth is hidden in the heart, it grows like a seed hidden in the earth. Whatever is valuable and truthful, when it is hidden in the heart, it grows like a seed in the earth. Do not throw it out. Let it remain hidden deep within the soil the fertile soil of your heart. If you throw a seed on the street for everyone to see, it will die to no purpose. It will simply die and there will be no birth. So all that is beautiful, all that is truthful, hide it deep within the heart and allow it to grow there. Treat all that is beautiful, good and true, just like a seed. Give it some soil, a hidden place in the heart, but do not display it. However, just the opposite is done by everybody. Whatever is wrong, you hide it. You do not want it to be known by others. Whatsoever is ugly, you hide and whatsoever is beautiful, even if it is not, you try to advertise, magnify and display it. Hence there is misery because the ugly grows and beautiful is lost. The untrue grows, it becomes a seed and truth is thrown away. This is the human nature, to hide all that is ugly and advertise, magnify and display all that is beautiful. Whereas in reality the opposite should be the case. All that is beautiful, all that is precious, hide it deep within your heart. Give it a little fertile soil and allow it to grow and assume a new birth. But we throw the precious and allow the rubbish to grow. You become like weeds. No flower comes to your life because you have never done the right thing. Hidden the seed of the flower within, this opposite is the path. And I see this is one of the most secret keys of Tao, or Tao as it is pronounced. A man of Tao remains ordinary, absolutely ordinary. Nobody knows who he is and nobody knows what he carries within him, what treasures he has. He never advertises and he never tries to display. But why do we advertise? It is always because of ego. You are not satisfied with yourself. You are satisfied only when others appreciate you. You may have a valuable stone, but it is not enough. What is indeed important is that others must appreciate it. Others' opinion is more valuable, not your being. You look into others' eyes as if they are mirrors, and if they appreciate you and applaud you, feel good. Ego is the false phenomenon. It is the accumulation of others' opinion, not ego is a phenomenon of others' opinion, 
not the awareness, understanding or knowledge of the Self. This Self, this so-called Self, which is really the ego, is nothing but the accumulation of reflections. And then there is always fear. Others may change their mind. You are always dependent on them. You are always dependent on them to appreciate your work, appreciate you, appreciate all that you do. If they say you are good, you have to follow their rules to remain good. You have to follow them to remain good in their eyes. Certainly once they change their opinions, you will no longer be good in their eyes and then you will not feel good. You have no direct approach to your being. It is a via others approach. So you not only advertise, you magnify and you falsify. You may have a little truth, a little beauty, but you magnify it and it becomes ridiculous. I have heard that it happened. I have heard that it happened once at the hill station on the lawn of a famous hotel. Three elderly ladies were playing cards. A fourth approach and she asked if she could join them. They said, of course, you are welcome. But there are a few rules and they handed a printed card with four rules on it. The first was never talk about mink coats because we all have them. Second, never talk about your grandchildren because we are all grandmothers. Third, never talk about jewelry because we all have precious jewelry purchased from the best of the places. And fourth, fourthly, never talk about sex. What was, was. So these were four rules which naturally everyone talks about. The first was never talk about mink coats because we all have them. Second, Never talk about your grandchildren because we are all grandmothers. Third, never talk about ju your jewelry because we all have precious jewelry purchased from best of the places. And fourthly, never talk about sex. What was, was. We are all grandmothers. But everybody wants to talk about himself his mink coats, his jewelry, his children and his sex. And everybody bores everybody else. And if you tolerate fools, you tolerate them only because it is a mutual understanding. If he is boring you, and if you tolerate fools, you tolerate them only because it is a mutual understanding. If he is boring you, he will allow himself to be bored by you. You are just waiting. When he stops his display, you can start your own. And this is how the conversation goes on. And the whole of life becomes a false, a continued display of foolishness. What do you achieve through it? There is just a false feeling that you are important and extraordinary. How can one become extraordinary by having mink coats or jewelry or grandchildren? How can one become extraordinary by owning valuable jewelry? How can one become extraordinary by doing this or that? Extraordinariness is not concerned with what you do. Certainly it is concerned with what you are. Extraordinariness is concerned with what you are. 
and you are already extraordinary, this you know not. Everyone is unique. There is no need to prove it. If you try to prove it, you will just prove the opposite. If something is already the case, how can you prove it? If you try to prove it, you simply show that you are not aware of the uniqueness that has already happened to you. Everyone is unique in his own way. So if you want to prove something, it shows that you are doubtful about it. You want to destroy your doubts through others' eyes and their opinions. You are not really convinced of your beauty and you are not concerned with your inner beauty and you would like others to say that you are beautiful. So we rejoice in the opinion of others. One says, oh, you have a beautiful clothes. Your makeup is really good. Oh, you know I did it in that parlor. That beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. And you too looking gorgeous. This is what goes on. You may go on thinking yourself as beautiful, but nobody thinks that way about you because everybody is concerned with his own beauty, not with yours. And if anybody nods and says, yes, you are beautiful, he or she is waiting for you to nod about his or her beauty as well. And in return, it is a mutual bargain. You will fulfill my ego and I will yours. I know well that you are not beautiful. You know well that I am not beautiful. But both can fulfill each other's ego. And this is what goes on. We keep on talking about each other's mink coats, jewelries, grandchildren, and this and that. You are unique and extraordinary. Everybody has needs. Everybody seems to have such a need to feel unique. That means you have not come upon your being which is unique without any need of proof. Proofs are needed only when there are lies. Proofs are needed only for lies, remember. That is why you cannot prove God, because He is the ultimate truth. Proofs are needed only for lies. Truth needs no proof. Truth simply is. You are unique. You are extraordinary. If you are not convinced about your uniqueness, who is going to be convinced about it? Conviction is beyond proof. And how does it come? It comes through self-awareness self-understanding. So there are two ways, knowledge, direct, knowing oneself directly, immediately. This is the right way. And the wrong way is knowing oneself through others, what they say. And if you do not know yourself, how can they know you? They are far, far away, very far. You are the nearest person to know yourself. If you do not know your reality, how can others know? But because we lack self-knowledge, we need a substitute. Ego is the substitute and ego is on constant display. You are just like a display window, a showcase in the marketplace. You have become a commodity. You have reduced yourself a commodity on display. And you start always begging for someone to say, you are good, beautiful, saintly, great, and extraordinary. Tao is against all this. Because Tao says that this is how you waste your life. 
the same energy can move directly towards your being and when the being is revealed it is extraordinary so a man who is in search of self knowledge or awareness will remain ordinary in the eyes of the others he will not bother he will hide himself and not display he will remain silent live silently enjoy life silently he would like nobody to bother about him because whenever somebody bothers about you or thinks about you it is going to be difficult and complex self knowledge becomes more and more difficult in that case you have to go there alone and if you are looking at the crowd and if you think that the crowd has to follow you you will never reach if you are an exhibitionist then you will remain a commodity you can never become a person because person is hidden deep in the recesses of the being it is the deepest possibility in the whole existence you are the great abyss nobody else can go there with you alone you have to go there and alone you have to do well there you will have to go alone and if you are too concerned about others what they say what they think you will remain on the periphery and that is one thing and the second thing is just to be on display you hide whatsoever is ugly it clothes words gestures masks and actions you try to hide whatsoever is ugly and wrong what are you doing this wrong will become a seed inside and will grow and the more you push it in the more you will be throwing it towards the source of all energy and it will be strengthened because the light is within all possibilities of growth are within and when you throw your ugliness your gestures your mask your clothes your words your actions inside they will start growing they will be strengthened and the beautiful you throw out and it will never become a seed and unless something becomes seed it will never grow just do the opposite if you have something ugly show it to others and then it disappears if you are an angry person tell everybody i am an angry person do not love me or be a friend with me i am a bad man i am ugly i am immoral i am greedy i am sexual say what swever is ugly about you not only say it but authentically act it out and you will be surprised that whenever something is thrown out it disappears it disperses in hide all that is beautiful let it go deeper so that it can get roots in your being and then it will grow but you have been doing just the opposite i remember an incident of long ago i was then still teaching in the university it was the occasion of international econometric conference i had a friend a professor who was to present the paper next morning there were certain participants who wanted us to accompany them for the evening outing we were not interested so my friend decided a plan according to the plan he had empty alcohol bottles and glasses in his room with a few drops of alcohol on his clothes so when the people came to take us he pretended as if drunk he started talking and walking like the drunkards seeing the situation they went alone thus we were spared and next morning the research paper was presented 
it was that something spontaneously came out. It is in the profits of my public vices that I nourish my private virtues. This is a Taoist statement. It is in the profits of my public vices that I nourish my private virtues. I throw my public vices out for the people to react and hide my virtues deep within the recesses of my heart so that they can nourish, they can grow into a beautiful garden. He did not care about the people and whatsoever they had to say. This is a Taoist approach. Since then it has become an important saying. Again and again I have mentioned of it to you in this incident. This is the Taoist way because a Taoist hides his virtues even if he has to exhibit public vices. One should use public vices always to nourish the private virtues. This is the way one can grow. One can grow into awareness and develop a beautiful garden within his being will be a garden where myriads of flowers blossom each day.